ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Grant County, West Virginia Matrix Show. I am your host, Brian Shreve. And on today's show, I will be talking about gun control and my run for county commissioner. I have an update on that. Uh, but first, we are going to talk about gun control. Gun control is one of those issues that uh, really gets my blood pressure up. That's why I highly recommend a blood pressure machine. I think everybody should have at least one in their home. Blood pressure is something to be very serious about. It is the silent killer. I highly recommend one of these. You can get them at the pharmacy or you can order them online. Get you one. Keep an eye on your blood pressure. Don't let it get out of hand. Don't let it creep up on you. And it's too late to do anything about it. Alright, back to the subject here of gun control. That is something that, uh, in my opinion, will not work. It's like banning drugs. We've been fighting that war since 1971. We still have people overdosing on heroin, cocaine, whatever else, meth, all kinds of stuff. Banning something is not a solution. There's always going to be someone out there find a clever way to make something if they want it bad enough. And in today's society, we have a wealth of knowledge in the palm of our hands. All you got to do is pick up your iPhone, get on your computer, look it up, Google it, YouTube videos, whatever. If somebody wants to do something, they're going to do it. It's like Michael Landon always said, where there's a will, there's a way. And I will give you an example. This is an AR-15 lower. This is the part that has the trigger assembly in it, the trigger that holds the magazine. This is the part with the serial number on it. It's made out of aluminum. You can get on YouTube, there's a video that shows how to melt down aluminum cans and pour into a mold and make one of these. You can buy portable machine shops and make the rest of the parts with. There's no stopping this. There's, there's no banning it and getting rid of these. Somebody is going to come up with a clever way to make these. You can buy a block of aluminum if you're patient enough and take a Dremel and do all this stuff. It might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but who cares as long as it works. There is no banning guns. They could try it, but it's not going to work. It's going to create a whole new black market. And everybody and their dog that wants to make an extra buck is going to jump on the bandwagon just like they did in Prohibition days and try to make these. There's millions of them out there now. I mean, how do you get rid of them? And what good would it do? Somebody's just going to make more. That's just how it is. This is America. People are creative. There's a reason why the Americans are so ahead of everybody else usually for years up until recently that for years we were ahead of everybody else. Here is a book called Behold a Pale Horse. This book was put out in 1991. The guy that wrote it is named William Cooper. He was in, uh, I think he was in the Navy. I think he was in the Air Force. And then once he got out of the Air Force, went into the Navy, if I'm not mistaken. But he was from a military family. He was around a lot of military people, had inside information, etc. And he wrote this book. I'm going to read one paragraph to you. And keep in mind, this was written in 1991. The government encouraged the manufacture and importation of military firearms for criminals to use. This is intended to foster a feeling of insecurity which would lead the American people to voluntarily disarm themselves by passing laws against firearms. Using drugs and hypnosis on mental patients in a process called 
Orion, the CIA inculcated the desire in these people to open fire on schoolyards and thus inflame the anti-gun lobby. This plan is well underway and so far is working perfectly. The middle class is begging the government to do away with the Second Amendment. This was written in 1991. This guy was way ahead of his time. And basically this is what we have. We have shooters that are on psychotropic drugs and now we got the anti-gun lobby going crazy. Going nuts. Wanting to ban guns. When somebody gets killed with a car like happened up, I think it was New York, somebody used a truck and run over some people. Was they calling for a ban on vehicles? No. They wanted to ban guns. And the reason they want to ban guns is because it don't affect them. They don't own guns. Anything that don't affect them, they're against. But you try to take something away from them like their cell phone, all hell's going to break loose. That's how the, the anti-gun lobby people work, the liberals and stuff like that. But William Cooper wrote this in 1991, a very intelligent man, three months before 9-11 he got on his radio show and stated that there will be a terrorist attack in the United States and it will be blamed on Osama bin Laden, but it will actually be our government behind the terrorist attack. Sure enough, three months later 9-11 happened. Two months later, William Cooper was lured out of his house by the authorities and there was a gunfight and he got shot and killed. They said he did not pay his taxes and he had an arsenal is what he was accused of. How many times have we heard that before? What it was, he knew too much and they had to shut him up and that's what they did. And it's a sad thing. We got people now that... Uh, I know for sure, or pretty well know, that 9-11 uh, was an inside job. Anybody with two brain cells rubbed together ought to be able to figure that out. It wasn't long after 9-11. It was the 9-11 Truth Movement and all that. So William Cooper, in my opinion, was right. He knew what he was talking about. And enough with that. I got a video I want to show you. It's a short one, not very long. Kind of give you an idea about things. If I can get it to work. This guy I'm getting ready to show you on here, his name is Jordan Maxwell. Get on YouTube and type his name in. He is a wealth of knowledge. Some of his stuff is out there. You gotta pay close attention to what he says, but he is a wealth of knowledge. The day you give up your firearms to protect your family, your wife and your children in your home, I'm not advocating anyone killing anyone, but if you give up your firearms, the Nazis will march into this country and take this thing over, lock, stuck, and barrel, quick. The only thing that has kept America free, I believe, is that these people at the top, the Nazis and the fascists who have been waiting to destroy our country, the only reason they haven't made their move is because the guns in America represent the largest single uh, armed camp on the earth as Americans. And I say don't ever give up your firearms because when you do, you will begin to see quickly the complete and total collapse of America to the fascists and Nazis who are running this country from behind the scenes. Somebody better wake up. We are in serious trouble. I think New York, I think the incident in New York was a staged incident and the people who intend to enslave our country couldn't care less. Well, 
there you have it. Don't give up your guns. Don't ever give up your guns. That is the only thing keeping us free and safe. Keep your guns. Stand up and fight for them. I'll show you another video. This is comical. It's Archie Bunker. But Hollywood is notorious for throwing in uh, symbols and signs in their movies and TV shows because they sit and make fun of us. They know who's really in control and they think most of us don't. Most of us really don't know who's in control. So they throw this stuff out, kind of tease us. Some people pick up on it and some don't. I picked up on this. But here, we, here we go.
be responsible adults and take care of their children. That would help solve some of the problems. Adults need to be held accountable. There were four police officers down in Parkland, Florida stood outside the school and did not run in to help. They need to be held accountable. It was their job to serve and protect. They should have run in there like the place was on fire and done what they could to help. But no, those cowards stood outside. I have no respect for them that they should be held accountable along with anybody else that did not do their part to help out. Pharmaceutical drugs that's a big problem. There's all these drugs out there that affect everybody differently. One pill might make somebody feel great, best thing they ever took. That same pill you give to somebody else, they're wanting to kill themselves. Something needs to be done about the pharmaceutical drugs. That has played a key role in some of these shootings lately. Training kids to huddle together as stationary targets on the ground has to stop. Kids need to be taught whenever there's a shooting or, or any type of crisis, don't cringe up and huddle and stop. They have got to get up and fight. Run. Whatever the situation dictates, you got to do, you got to do. For thousands of years, it has been about survival. Whether surviving uh, your some crazy nut trying to kill you, a winter storm, a hurricane, whatever it may be, you've got to survive. You've got to stand up and fight. You've got to be a fighter. Another thing needs to be done is to have a plan. Schools need to have a plan for when this kind of thing happens. We have uh, fire drills. When I went to school, why not have a, a drill for a shooter or something? I mean, I remember in the second grade when some nutcase lady said she had a dream that we was going to have an earthquake on a certain day at around 2 o'clock. I can't remember which. But our teachers took it serious and told us if anything does happen to crawl under our desk. Of course, nothing happened. The lady was nuts. But they took the precaution just in case. You never know. And finally, we need to improve our culture. Our culture has went to crap. There's no rules anymore. There's no value for life. It is a sad situation. And banning guns ain't going to change that. We've got to change that ourselves. We've got to find it in ourselves to want to change and do better. we got people running around like, like a, a madhouse or something, just doing anything they want, making the rules up as they go, no responsibility for their actions, nothing. And without morals and values, freedom will not work. I think Benjamin Franklin said that. Without morals and values, freedom will not work. And that's what we're having. And we are all to blame for it. Very seldom people, very few people go to church anymore. I'm one of them. I don't go to church. In my opinion, a lot of them is corrupt, but that's just my opinion. But I do do my own reading and research. I have my own beliefs and I do believe in a creator. But we all need, need to improve on our morals and values. That would be one way to put a stop to this gun violence. Gun control is not going to do it. And that's about all I have to say about gun control for right now. Uh, I will give you uh, 
my update on running for office. I have to be in Bridgeport on April 28th to go to the Libertarian Convention. There I will get the nomination. Then after the primaries, I can file and run for the uh, general election for county commissioner. So if all goes well, I'll go to the convention and be well on my way, and I, and I appreciate everybody's support. And enough with the serious talk. Don't forget to tune in tonight to The Walking Dead. I am a big fan of The Walking Dead. That's another example of Hollywood making fun of us. The zombies represent the sheep out there that do not know what's going on. Don't know how to take care of themselves. Don't know how to defend themselves. Those are the zombies. Let's say, for example, we have an EMP attack. Takes out the whole electrical grid. You're on your own. There's going to be some of us old country boys and gals. We know how to hunt, grow things, build things, find water, stuff like that. We'll be the Rick Grimes of The Walking Dead. That bunch. The zombies are going to be that bunch like in D.C. Don't have a clue. They're going to come looking for food and eating anything they can find to eat. That's what the zombie movies are about in shows. That's Hollywood making fun of us again. But I do really enjoy zombie movies. I am a fan of them. And tonight The Walking Dead's back on. I can't wait to see Rick Grimes whip out his uh, Colt Python 357 Magnum and just go wild on everybody. I know that wasn't nice, but... Uh, <laughs> I gotta have a little bit of fun. So everybody uh, tune in to The Walking Dead tonight. See what happens to Coral, a.k.a. Carl. He got bit in the uh, mid-season finale. I've been waiting to see how, how that actually happened. So uh, until next time, don't give up your guns, whatever you do. Don't give an inch. Don't budge. Don't compromise nothing. Keep your guns. So stay safe out there.